essentially the southern whites and uh, the poor whites and poor blacks really ended up in the same place as they ha had been before the Civil War. And Reconstruction, that little period in 1865 to 1877, where blacks were doing incredibly well, they're becoming lawyers and doctors and going to school, was wiped out with the help of the Klan. I mean, talk about terrorism. Those people burned people alive, hung people, lynched them. Between 1877 and 1950, there were 4,000 lynchings in the United States. And, and that wasn't just blacks. I quite think a quarter was white. But anybody who helped blacks were lynched. And, you know, basically the Klan and the ruling class said, you know, we're not going to go back to the days of that small period. And ultimately, in 1896, we had Plessy versus Ferguson in the Supreme Court, which basically was the separate but equal. So it's institutionalized in every single fashion, in the Supreme Court, in the education system, you name it, racism is institutionalized. So then you had colored bathrooms, you had, you know, colored, um, what you call water fountains, movie theaters, education, everything. It was completely institutionalized. And one of the other things that allowed for, two things that allowed for the mass incarceration was the 13th Amendment. And I've had arguments with a number of people who are into civil, you know, into the Civil War period. It doesn't just say that all men are free no matter what, you can't put somebody in bondage because of their race. It says everybody is free unless they've committed a crime. And that committed, if you look at the 13th Amendment, it opened the door for a lot of the black codes. And I don't, I'm not saying that Lincoln meant for it to, because Lincoln was the one that pushed the 13th mm -hmm. Amendment. But it opened the door. So if I spit or, or play gamble and I could go to jail for 10 years and it'd be fine so much, I'll never be able to pay it off and exactly. I just become a servant again. And spitting was one of the crimes. Walking near a railroad track was one of the crimes. Some things that were like misdemeanors became felonies. So that they were able to have a convict labor system after that because so many blacks were incarcerated after that and, they, and there was no money in the treasuries in many of these states that were bankrupt and they didn't want to tax the wealthy that they leased out all these black people who basically they incarcerated and really enslaved again so that they can work on roads and things like that, public works, and uh, it would fill the tills of the state treasuries. And all these people ended up either dying on the job or living out their lives in, in prison. So it was completely institutionalized by the black code.